Kansas. You read about it, you hear stories about the big ones. You see a pile of successful photos of monster bucks and you put it on your wish list for someday to make it happen. Stop! Don't wait no longer. It's not going to get any better than it is right now. Yes, there are big bucks in Kansas. And if you're in the right spot at the right time, you just might put your tag on the biggest monster buck of your life. Are they there? You betcha, and in many places due to the terrain, they allow us bow hunters to get in the right spots and keep the wind in our favor. When you think of watching Realtree's Monster Buck videos and seeing one of those big boys come down that trail, we all wish we were that hunter. And then we ask ourselves, why aren't we him or her? It's because you're not the one in Kansas, Toto. Is it the genetics, the protein, the soil? What is it that makes them grow like they do? I'll tell you what. Through all our travels, if there is one thing we have learned, you want big deer, let them grow in age. And with the right feed and age structure, you can get big deer. And what better place than Kansas? When you drive through this state, you see all the vast open countryside and wonder where or how can deer live out here? Heck, I can watch my dog run away for three days out there. Now, just remember this. Where you least suspect a big buck, expect him to be. Is that a bear or what? Look at the size of this bear! He's a loser! Hi, welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. And this week we're going to Kansas where those big bucks roam. Big bucks. And let me tell you something. Kansas is everything you've ever heard about, read about, saw, and dreamed about. And talking about dreams. <laughs> Did you reach your dream this, this My past dream past? came true. Check all this out. Ted, you know, you, you're, not, you're not really running this as an outfitting. You, you pretty much, I mean, you've been here your whole life. You, you know, I mean, gosh dang, you know what these deer are doing. You know each draw, you know each bedding area, and uh, how do you, how are you really run at this? Well, this is a ranching operation, and I've been born and raised ranching in, in, this, in this farming community, and uh, I've hunted all my life, I love hunting, and to be quite truthful about it, agriculture is getting to be a way of life instead of a way of living, and this is an opportune moment for supplement income, and I want to try to develop a program or a business that maybe my son can come back to the ranch and still have this way of way of life, but maybe some supplement income. What is it about hunting trophy bucks that drives most of us crazy? We here at Archer's Choice like to call it severe whitetail disorders. <laughs> Hunting these big boys most of the time will take you off the main trails. You might not see as many deer. You'll sit in stands a lot longer. You'll be willing to face severe weather, rain, snow, bugs, winds, and whatever. But you know that sometimes, somewhere, all the sitting, all the stand moving, all everything just might pay off and you'll have an opportunity at one of those big boys of Kansas. You know it takes a certain kind of person who can dedicate their whole season to just shoot that one big deer, and we commend that person. We, on the other hand, love to just hunt deer. And because we are in the woods so much, things just might happen when we least expect it. We are dedicated deer hunters, but we are not trophy deer hunters, and we don't want to mislead anyone watching the show. Yes, we like to shoot big deer, but if they ain't big deer, we're still pumped, excited, and always ready for the challenge. Now, you need to understand one thing. Ralph does actually shoot his buck before I did. But, as we always say, we'll save the best for last. There it is. He outdid she admits me. it. Do you realize she admits it? I have to give him recognition on this one. He outdid me more so that I could only hope that once in my lifetime I could shoot a buck like he does. But, in the meantime, let's just sit back and relax and enjoy my hunt because we did a great Great rattling sequence. Nice old mature eight point came in. Oh, for he me was old, Vic. And oh. I got to give you credit where credit's due. I mean, you pounded him. He's a little over 30 yards, and you just you put that beam in where it needed to go. Check this hunt out. We're in Kansas. 
got a northwest wind this, this afternoon. It is pretty gusty out here. It's supposed to die down to about 5 to 10 miles. They were saying 25 earlier, so hopefully it's going to die down. We're on a main trail out here between the river and the green fields. They can see some bucks in the area. We're hoping that we got set up in the right tree, and hopefully we'll get an opportunity at them right here. Keep our fingers crossed. I got an exodon down Oh, look at this one. Oh. I didn't even notice this. Look at this. He's... Wow. He's... Well, he... he's scrapping pretty good. Oh, my goodness. He's scrapping pretty good. He broke his own tongue. I didn't even really notice that. He's a bruiser. Well, Ralph, I shot an awesome Great buck. Dear, a big old mature Man. point. They said, oh. yeah, they said he's probably between seven and eight years old. I mean, that's an old buck. Great his, buck to take out of the herd. Great buck to take out of the herd. Um, when I when I had shot him, I didn't realize that his front main beam was a little busted. But Who hey, cares? he's still a beautiful buck, and you don't eat antlers anyway. So. No, heck no. And let me tell you, we did, we set up that stand. You know, I think paid off, Vic is using your seat of the pants yeah. is you were able to lean away actually use the belt to give you that security to lean that far out because you had to shoot underneath the limb i had to shoot under the limb around and the tree yeah, almost behind you yeah i mean that's that's the way it was set up we, we set it up once we got set up that afternoon we realized we kind of messed up big mature bucks aren't going to come out in the middle of the big open green field first they're going to try coming downwind of you behind you and that's exactly what he did he went between the river and us which was narrow there was a limb right there and but my seat of the pants, my safety yeah. harness, I used it to my advantage. Absolutely. I mean, you use it for safety all the time anyways, but I did use it to my advantage after I used it for so so many years now. I've just gotten so accustomed to having it on me that I was able to lean a little bit further. If I hadn't had it on, I wouldn't have yep. been able to do so. And that's a good point for, you know, for everybody, and that is get up in your tree stand. You don't have to get 20 feet. Right. Get, get two foot off the ground. And practice. And get your, you know, get your full body harness. Get it, lean and draw and shoot and practice like that. And that's going to make you more successful on taking those shots that just may not be a perfect shot that really never happens. What a buck, Vic. Thanks. What a buck. You know what's really great? What? I know, it's not bigger than yours. I know. Let's not kid ourselves. First of all, you have to be hunting an area that has trophy deer if you want to shoot one. A lot of places that we hunt, maybe it's public land or maybe it's private but you don't control the pressure. A lot of those bigger deer you may never ever see. They're totally nocturnal. So remember, you've got to go to an area that has trophy quality deer that the pressure is controlled. That's one of the things, when you see a lot of this footage, whether it's our show or anyone else's, or videos, remember folks, you're only seeing the best of the best footage. You're not seeing the hours upon hours, could be days, 
of us sitting in the stand doing this. See anything? No. How about you? No. What time is it? 7.30? Want to go for lunch? Yeah, let's get out of here. <laughs> That's what really happens. But how many of you want to watch a show or watch a video that we show all, the real, all that stuff? You ain't going to want to do it. Remember, you've got to be in an area that has trophy deer and that the pressure is controlled so they're not bumping these deer and turning them totally nocturnal. That is the trick of getting into good trophy areas. I don't know about you, but I can tell you from my own personal experience is when I watch the shows and I watch the videos and I see the pictures on the front covers of all the magazines and they're holding these giant deer and they show these giant deer and they're in the wild. Something about that just gets you so excited. And when I sat there in a the stand, got done ran after hearing Vicky and we look and I could see this buck coming in, I have to tell you, everything was flashing past me. I mean. I, I just wanted to get in that zone. I didn't want to look at the rack anymore because that happened to a lot of us. Is you get so engrossed in looking at the, the, the size of the antlers that sometimes, well, we, we don't make the shot we wanted to or we miss. And Seeing a deer light, whether I took him or not, that was an honor and a privilege to see that animal. Then to be able to have the opportunity. Thank you, big guy. Once we're back and we're here with Ted Lukens here in Kansas and what a long night. You know, anytime you have that, we, we shot the buck and, and Ted, you know the lay of the land, you know pretty much where the deer go and uh, oh Dave, I, I can't thank you enough, you know, giving up your morning hunt. To, it was, it was well, well, well worth it once you find him. Oh Ted, and you, and you know, so let's, let's get on this track and see what happens. Yeah, I want to thank Dave for staying today too because he was going to head back home to North Dakota. So uh, I'm glad he's here to help. Maybe thank you. Find this deer Another set of eyes, boy. Woo. I know the lay of the land here, and maybe we'll get lucky and, and uh, get on the right trail and find this deer. Let's do it. Oh, man. We're going to start from the stand then, right? we got some over here. There's some on the brush. All right. Some good blood. Here. Yeah. 
за растер! Уберись! Я отду! Окей! Oh, guys, come here, man. Come here. Oh, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, thank you. What a buck. Oh. Congratulations. Oh, man. I'm so happy for you. I'm telling you what, I, I can't. Everybody has to understand that. We all have goals. Oh, and, 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 and one of his dreams and his goals was to actually take a Boone and Crockett buck with my bow, with his bow, with my Hoyt bow. I in mean, in the wild, just... you know, nothing else around but just us using our hunting knowledge and our experience and Ted's exp yep. knowledge also. Of knowing he did the, help the us, area, right. knowing the, the movement yeah, of the he deer. He helped and... us out because we could have taken a few more days, but the first evening hunt. Oh my gosh. I'm going to tell you something, this doesn't happen all the time. I shot my first, I had my first opportunity and shot my first deer at 14 with my bow. And I'm, uh... Old. Yeah, I'm old. Yeah, you're old. I've been around a long time and playing this game for a real long time. And the first Buddha. It could be my last. And I'm still satisfied because we're not really trophy hunters, per se. No, but... We love to hunt deer. We love to hunt everything with but, our bow, but... But when you get a chance oh, to hunt like that, you're not going to it up by any means. <laughs> oh, well, we hope you enjoyed this week's show, and we want to thank, thank Ted Lukens for helping us out on making really yes. both our dreams come true. Thank you, Ted. So remember, same time. Same station. Right, right here, here on, on The, the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.